So now I'm here with Chuck Barth. Yep. And uh, we're standing in front of a pretty phenomenal airplane. Most of y'all know me for flying slow and low, but this thing flies fast and slow, right? High, fast, and slow. And what is it called? It's called a Tarragon, and these are made in uh, Latvia. Tell me a little bit about the airplane, because this yeah. thing is a sleek looking airplane. Yeah, so these are made out of uh, prepreg carbon fiber. It's an aerospace prepreg carbon fiber, so there's no wet layup carbon fiber anywhere on the airplane. So there's no glue that a worker puts into the weave that's already built into the weave. So a lot of guys ask, oh, what kind of color can I paint them? We can paint these any color. The heat's not an issue with us. As far as the material goes, it's an issue with how hot the airplane gets and it's uncomfortable. So we generally paint them lighter, but the tops of this one's black. So we can run them black and we can run, run them down here in Florida. But uh, so it's pre preg carbon fiber. It's one piece construction wing. So the spar goes wing tip to wing tip. And then the fuselage is monocoque constructed. We've got about four bulkheads running all the way to the tail. And then when you're sitting in the airplane, you're sitting on a bulkhead. The seat is a bulkhead. It's at about a 30 degree rake like an F-16. So it's really comfortable. And then, but you're also sitting in this bulkhead that is at the CG. So your butt's basically sitting right on the center of gravity. So you feel like when the people talk about, you know, put an airplane on your back, like you feel like you strap it on, this airplane feels like you're strapping it on. Really fun airplane to fly. Stall at 44 knots, 44 to 46 knots, depends on how it's configured. And then um, clean stall speed is anywhere from 51 to 52 knots. But then we cruise at 170 knots at 70% power and burn about 6.7 gallons per hour. We can get up to 22 to 24,000 feet. The, these like to live in the 14 to 18,000 foot range. It's optimal performance. And we'll get about 1,100 nautical mile cruise out of 40 to 42 gallons of usable fuel. And you said you had an oxygen generator in them, right? Yeah, we carry, we run Ithra oxygen systems in them and we prefer to put the generator because it has no bottle. You just turn it on, put the cannula in and, and breathe. And, and so uh, tell me, what's the engine? The, the engines we're importing now are the Rotex 916 series engines, so the newest, latest, greatest uh, Rotex engines. The older ones ranged anywhere from 100 horsepower 912. The airplane weighed 600 pounds back then. Empty weight on this is about 950 to 960. It, again, depends on how it's configured. So we're putting the 160 horse 916 on there. And what's the, say the top speed again? Uh, v and &E on these, we publish at 200 knots. And your typical cruise? 170. 170, and that's on yeah. about seven gallons, six gallons? 6.6, 6.7 6 yeah. gallon. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, very efficient. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah I drag sure. the storage through the air at six and a half gallons an hour, too. Sure you do. And yeah. with all that drag, at, at si yeah, 65 miles an hour, or 75 yeah. miles an hour, so yeah, right. about 58 knots. Yeah. Right, right, right. Not very dang fast. No. But this thing here looks like a blast. and. Uh, and we've been talking about it. I think you're going to let me keep in Texas for a while. Is yeah, that right? we're going to come yeah. down and we're going to come down and play with it. For yeah, a bit. that'd like, be yeah. cool. Yep, it'd be fun. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to flying it. Uh, and, we're, yeah, we're. It's a great machine. It's super fun to fly. And we've been talking a little bit about trying to make a light one again. That's yeah. not IFR. That's not you know doesn't have all the bells and whistles. And we can run these with a hundred at a 950 pound airplane, and we're running a 190 horse boosted engine. We're off the ground at 150 feet. Yeah. And 3,500 foot a minute right So we can do stall competitions with it. And then go 200 mile an hour. Yeah. I would, a stall competition <laughs> might be fun. I don't think I'd want to land it on a sandbar. I don't You're think You're going to have to get a lot bigger tires yeah, for that, yeah, yeah. for that happens. Yeah, yeah. Or, you yeah, we're not that kind of stall. Yeah, not that kind of stall. <laughs> you just, just this, this demo how slow and stall, uh, right? stall it can be, but right, it's not right, really right. a backcountry airplane. No, but we want to just kind of show it off and have yeah. fun at a stall competition someday. Yeah, that would be fun. rip around real fast. That then, would be hilarious. And then land in 300 feet. That'd be awesome. I'd yeah. like to be part of that. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, let me, yeah. what's the in the avionics? Uh, it's all Garmin avionics. So we run a G3X 10 inch in the front. We'll pop that canopy yeah. open. We're on a G3X 10 inch in the front, G3X 7 inch in the back, G5 backups front and back, and then a GNX 375 is the transponder that we're typically using. We can do the, the 650, but it's heavier, and it, we get more, I think, out of the 375 for the weight. Yeah. But every piece of component, uh, all the avionics are all Garmin, even the pitot tube, the fuel sending units, everything's Garmin. 
Yeah. Yep. So we can and get so, everything. And this is an go. MT prop, right? Yeah, this one's MT. We run MT, we run Duke, we run Airmaster. It's kind of a customer preference. Yep. Let's go around and look inside. Yeah. Pop this canopy open real quick. Look Very at that. similar interior to a Ferrari. Yeah, and you got the back seat there. It looks yep. Baggage is behind that back seat. Oh, I see the door there. Yep. Here in the U.S., we can put about 60 pounds of baggage in the back. In Europe, they're a little bit more limited because of gross weight. That is really cool. Interesting thing about Tarragons is the brakes are uh, not independent. You have both brakes at the same time, so the brakes are on the throttle. But you got full nose wheel steering. Yeah, full nose wheel steering. Yep. Okay, and the brakes? On the uh, throttle. On the throttle. Yep. So oh, I, see, yeah, right I see, in front I see of it the there, yeah. Okay. Brakes are on the throttle. That is something. Interesting thing to point out. I mean, you see all this carbon fiber in here and see yeah. how the lines all match up? Yeah, that's everything's that's hard. perfect. And that's bare carbon fiber. Yeah, that is nice. It's it's incredible the quality of workmanship that Can these I guys do. 100 percent Okay, so now right. I'm looking around it here and what I noticed right away right away this is a roomy cockpit yeah super roomy this feels comfortable yes because a lot of these small planes do not this feels comfortable let me uh, pull the hatch down yeah pull that is down. there a latch and, nope no latch okay. just okay. pull that down there's a little grab handle yeah. there set that oh there. wow yeah i can wear my hat in there look at that <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. My, wow that is amazing. A ton of room, and then you got really good visibility down. Yeah. So for formation flying things, you've got great downward yeah, visibility. Yeah, you got you got vis you can see everywhere. Now the controls, those are all torque tube. Yeah. So everything's I can feel it. Yeah. yeah, everything's precise and precision. The second you move that stick, you have input yeah. to your controls. I can I can feel that. And then the brake, I see the brake is actually oh I see how it works. You yeah, just you set yeah. your palm on it and you squeeze uh -huh. your two fingers. It's almost like the thrust reverses on a jet yeah, on a citation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except it's in the wrong hand. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but yeah. that is now that is something. Trim on the stick with the hat. You got autopilot disconnect and yeah. uh, a togo button on there. You got you got trim and then yep. One and of these is toga. Yeah, one. Yeah, take, the one take on the right is toga and the other one's autopilot disconnect. All right, we're in. Um, Push the talks on the trigger. That's a parking brake lever. Parking brake. Yep. Flaps are right above that. Yep. Okay. And the electric you know, flaps. It's so um, it's compact. Yep. It's ergonomically it's correct. Ergonomic. Ergonomically great. We spent I mean, a lot that, of time. I, everything is right here. It's not too close. Right. You really need it to flow, and so this is really flowing good. So. If you yeah. lose your primary flight display, you have your secondary backup. All these are interconnected, so your backseater can be running your radios. They can run that. They can run from the backseat the um, autopilot. They can change the barometer settings, uh, and they can do all the navigation. So they can set up all your nav things from the back. Yeah, this we is have nice. emergency gear switch levers in the back. So if for some reason the we need to get a, a set of gear down. That and is the front something. seaters that having an issue. Or, yeah. You can't control the prop and you can't control the flaps. From but the you back. can land it safely. But you can land the airplane. Yeah, and the and visibility got, is amazing out amazing. of this. We've got dual parachute handles front and back. Okay. So if your back seater is 100% unconscious and, and that you have an unexperienced somebody, we do have an emergency parachute in the back. Our landing gear, we make the landing gear from top to bottom. We don't make the wheels and brakes. That's Behringer. Mm -hmm. All of ours are Behringer wheels well, and brakes. Behringer is uh, good brakes. They've been, oh. they're, they're, we've got a lot of them in the, 100%, in the, yeah. in the stole world too. Yeah, they're, they're really There good. is no better wheels and brakes yeah. for this type of airplanes and the stuff you guys are doing. So an interesting thing though, uh, what we develop for our gear, and we make the gear again at the factory from top to bottom to include that switch. So we make the gear selector switch as well. And that'll show you a screen. Here, let me pop that on real quick. Did you feel that kick on? I did. Was that a servo? Or no. What? So that's the hydraulic pump boosting the pressure oh, in the okay. accumulator. I got it. So in the event you have an emergency, you have a hydraulic accumulator back there to blast the gear down. The gear oh. emergency, emergently comes down in one second. 
So what? What is the gear hydraulic? Oh yeah, it's electric so, over so hydraulic. It's hydraulic. Yep. Okay. Hyd yep. And uh, yep. electric over hydraulic. Yeah. But it's it has a hydraulic uh, accumulator to push it down. Yes. That's great. Yeah, for emergencies. Yeah. For emergency. Yeah. 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 So we'll flip that on. Let the Garmin's all spin up real quick. But here's this gear uh, switch. We make this in house. And so it shows the, and it's in bar, Yeah. but it shows the gear pressure and then it shows you have the landing gear. Now, another thing we incorporated, again, a safety thing, a lot of retractable gear airplanes have squat switches. Well, a squat switch can elude you occasionally on a hot a day. Bumpy, on a bumpy runway. A bumpy yeah. runway, yeah. and you can get the gear coming up. So we have got away from that, and we have our own proximity, a, a, a proximity sensor. And you can set that any altitude you want. So if you want to be minimum of six feet above the ground, you can flip the gear lever, but the gear will not come up until that proximity sensor determines that, yeah, okay, you're six feet above the ground, the gear will start coming up. Oh. You can set it for 20 feet, you can set it for 40 feet. You can you know, do that any way you want. Yeah. So this is just a G3X, standard, yep. standard, standard G3X. Standard yeah. G3X. And I'm familiar with that. Yep. The, uh, I love the, in the autopilot, I love these autopilots. You know, Garmin yes. has really come a long ways with these autopilots. That's so intuitive, I have so a, simple. A G, uh, G, G500 autopilot, a GFC okay. 500 autopilot in okay. my Bonanza. <laughs> so, I got you. You know, it's very similar. I mean, it's the same control head, essentially. It's not the GFC 500 in this, though, is it? No. It's, uh, it's a 15. Yeah, I for, the, for, the, for the G3X, it's different, but, but it's the same control head, essentially. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then you can control it. Yeah from the G3X. Yeah. All right, Chuck. Man, thank you so much for showing me around the plane. This is a beautiful plane. Heck yeah. And, uh, Glad you came out. And uh, so now for the, uh, the little bit of the unpleasant part, but what is it going to cost somebody to get into one of these things? Right. So these are turnkey aircraft built at the factories, and we do two types, experimental exhibition import, or we'll do an amateur built import where you go to the factory you spend about you participate 10 in the days, build. and you're yeah, you're going to do about over 51, about 52% of the build at the factory with the workers. And right now, so there's tariffs going on, but right now in 2025, we can sell these airplanes turnkey, IFR equipped with oxygen for in the 450 price range. Okay, well, so, and that's not really that's, out of line for a lot of these other, and, no, and no. less... Well, inside. we're also paying to ship it across the pond, right? You know? So there's a there's a bit of expense to get just get it to yeah. the United States. People have asked about flying it. We we have the range to fly it from Europe to here. Really? We just don't have the we don't have the cojones. Yeah, I was just going to say that's the exact word I was thinking of. You know, I've flown that. King Airs that route. Sure. And. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't want to do a poopy suit. And uh, when you look down and the water's hard, yeah. as in frozen, yeah. I don't want to be no, there. I don't want to part of that. No. So, so we won't let anybody do it right now. Just, yeah. If you really want to, I guess you you know eat to each your own. But yeah, we've got to pay quite a bit of money just to get them in the United States. Yeah. Well, thanks so. for taking the time oh, yeah. to talk to me. Oh, one other thing, you know, we have something in common. We do. And we what do is have that? something in common. I've got a early Slepchev Stork. Yeah, we both fly, yeah. and we both own and fly a Slepchev yeah. Stork. So, yeah. and uh, so anybody can fly a Stork can fly one of these, right? Oh, 100 percent. Okay, there you go. It's so much easier to fly. I'm ready. Than a stork. I'm ready for my first <laughs> lesson. All right, perfect. Let's, let's go. I'll be down to see you, and we'll go fly. All right, awesome. Heck yeah. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Okay, one final question. How do people get a hold of you when they decide they want to buy one of these things or just check it out? Sure, and it's super easy. We're at, based out of Pekin, Illinois. Charlie 15 is our airport identifier. We're right by Peoria, right in the middle of Illinois. We're Tarragon Aircraft USA. We've got a Facebook page. The factory website is uh, www.tarragonaircraft.com. And then you can find us, you know, all over the yeah. social medias yeah. and the Instagrams. Our uh, email address is sales at tarragonaircraftusa.com. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. baggage that you have available. Two carry-on bags will fit in there with some extra oil and 
Actually, and Essentials. it goes up behind that too, right? So yeah. you can. Yeah, it goes way up. Yeah. Yes. Okay, up so you, it's a little awkward maybe to stick it in there, but you can get a lot more yeah. in there. Yeah, you? you can put a lot in there. Mm -hmm. have to do this because it's just fun to do. So when people talk about living in Michigan, they talk about Detroit, Alpena, and Traverse City, right, to give yeah. you a geographic reference. So I tell everybody, Latvia, I turn my hand like this, and that's the continent of Russia. The fingered lines here, that's Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and down here's Poland. So that gives you a geographic orientation close, of where that's at. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very close. Very yeah. cool. They have some rough neighbors to their east.